Okay, 8mm film scanner part 2. How to clean, how to set up a camera, and how to scan film. I'm going to talk about removing dust, loading a film into the camera, setting up the camera focus and exposure, and finally doing a test scan. First thing, let's talk cleaning film. This is what I found worked for me. I recommend you experiment and test carefully. 99% isopropyl alcohol, some makeup removal pads, gloves to protect your skin, and then a weight. In my case, I used a stepper motor. I carefully applied the IPA to the pads, put one underneath and one above the film, weighted down with the stepper motor, and then ran the projector. In my case, I found it easiest to unplug the projector, switch it over to the rewind mode, and then plug it back in. And in this rewind mode, it runs with a lot of force. So film folks might be looking at me like, you shouldn't be doing this. But so far, I haven't ruined any film. It's actually cleaned it decently well. I do recommend though that you don't run this on your important family memories just yet. Test a few films you're willing to sacrifice first and make sure that they're safe. As you can see here, I am pulling some dirt off the film. Hopefully not the film color or exposure or ink or anything itself. Now for loading film into the scanner. You can do this pretty much like you would load a regular projector. What I found worked for me is putting the film under, under, and then over the rollers and the pins. I'll show it again. I used the screwdriver to pop it over the end one because the film tends to bend downward. Once I have that, I run the film down through the film gate, try to get it roughly lined up, and make sure that it doesn't get stuck inside the film gate. Um, sometimes that will happen. Then switch the projector to play mode. And depending on what kind you have, it might be auto forward or thread or play or motor or lamp. In my case, I've got motor and then lamp. You'll notice there's a release button here. And when the projector is in lamp mode, this allows the film to rewind, which is great. As an experiment, I threw in a fan. I don't think it really has much effect, but it was kind of fun, so I left it in there. Now for the little update on the electronics, I switched to using two nanos and put them on a terminal shield so it's a little bit easier to screw the wiring in. I power up the scanner, get the motor running, pull the first bit of the film in. The intent here is just to make sure that the mechanics are working okay. I'm going to mention the camera and hardware briefly. Uh, Sony plus a Laowa macro lens sitting on a macro focusing rail slider that I've flipped around in reverse so I can get it closer to the projector. And I'm basically using those macro controls to move it slightly forward and back to get my focus. And if I need it, I can put a counterweight stepper motor on the back side. That comes in, that's actually proven to be quite handy at times. Now in terms of the camera setup, there's a ton of detail here, but you want crop mode, uh, silent shutter, no mechanical stuff, focus highlighting, zebras for highlights, remote trigger, USB charging, and live view with the exposure setting. And it's really important that you see all this information when you're looking at the film going by the camera. So what I'm trying to do here is to line up the camera so that it's square with the film gate and then look for the way I've set it up, focus highlighting in yellow. Now, it's easy enough for you to eyeball this to see if your focus is good, but it's best to let the computers do it. If your exposure is decent, and I just say go for plus minus zero, then the focus highlighting should work really well. I found that if things were too dark, like at minus two, um, focus highlighting didn't seem to work. So something to keep in mind. Once you have things lined up, I just start advancing the film, actually scanning some frames. So I want to get forward past the film leader and I want to get to the first scene. Right now we're looking pretty decent and the exposure is plus 0.3, but I know that the film itself is going to be dark and it's probably going to be more dark than the lead in. 
So here's our first scene. Now is a good time to make some adjustments. So consider the exposure and you can also try to adjust, uh, line up the camera versus the film gate. Here I've actually, I might have it a little bit low and I might be clipping a little bit of that top frame um, of film outside the camera view. So I'm going to start fiddling with the camera positioning, trying to keep it square, but lined up and also have the film, a whole frame of film within the camera view. And this is probably the <laughs> least scientific portion of this whole process. It's pretty fiddly. There's a fair bit of the camera bouncing around. I don't have this thing super locked down on a really tight tripod. Um, so it is a little bit, it's a little shaky, but, and actually in this case, you can see across the horizontal, it's not, not exactly quite straight, but, and the vertical's not exactly great either. It's a little bit off, but again, this is a first rough draft. The real goal here is to figure out what settings get me the ideal exposure. And I want to make sure that the highlights that might come up in this film are not blown out. And if they are blown out, I want to make sure that they're not important. So we're about to see a case. It's getting kind of underexposed right now. I'm looking to see, well, should I adjust? And then there's going to be an overexposed scene coming up. So this is the classic challenge. At some point you've got to decide, do I want to sacrifice the shadows or sacrifice the highlights? Ideally, you don't have to do either, but in my finding with film, I've seen a lot of underexposed film and I've seen a certain amount of overexposed stuff as well. So this is the challenge. I don't think I talked too much about the camera exposure settings. So I aim to have a slow shutter speed, a closed down aperture. Now on the lens, in this case, this macro lens is entirely manual focus and the aperture is a manual uh, physical control. The camera does not recognize focus nor aperture on this particular lens. Okay, now I've hit a scene and I'm adjusting exposure. I'm a bit misaligned here, but I'm adjusting for an underexposed scene. So now we're getting zebras on the film sprocket holes. And in my opinion, that is absolutely fine. Those are not important to the picture. The important thing is exposing the film correctly, while ideally also preserving the highlights in the film. Don't worry about the holes where the light is shining through from the LED behind. We don't care about those. Now all of a sudden it looks like things are getting pretty bright. We've got someone wearing a white shirt and uh oh, we got zebras. Okay, yeah, we're running too hot. So camera showing 1.7 overexposure here. I need to bring the ISO down or use a faster shutter speed so that we don't get so much light coming through. So bring down the exposure a bit. In this case, I'm just going to try keeping the shutter speed and bringing the ISO down. Now this looks really bright, but this is where the balance, the challenge comes in. You have to decide between having say an ISO of 200 and this shirt is going to be bright, but then the prior scenes, which are more dark, you're going to be still preserving the shadows and the dark stuff better versus say compensating here for the shirt being relatively light, but then conversely in the former scenes having very dark shadows. So again, this is the balance. This is the challenge. I try to keep the same settings for one scene. So if the scene were to change a second take, a different take and the camera cuts to something else, 
I would consider that an opportunity to adjust my settings. So I've turned the scan speed up. I'm happy with these settings and now I've turned up the speed on the motor. So we're scanning at a faster rate. And I'm going to finish this segment. And I'm not going to get into the details of post-processing in Lightroom. Uh, but here is a result of how that first scan looks. A little bright, but not bad. And it, it looks like there's a pretty good range of color, lights, midtones, and shadows. I feel like I've done better, but I'm sure I've done worse. Now, after scanning your film, I found that the rewind mode is super handy. I didn't realize this at first, but the red button is the, the key on this particular machine. By pushing the red button, it goes into reverse mode and the wheels turn faster, the gears turn faster. So even my slowish running scan speed causes a faster rewind, which is great. This kind of thing is especially useful when you've just scanned a 400 foot reel like this one. That's all for now. Thanks for watching part two. I hope you found it interesting and insightful. In part three, I plan to talk about post-processing, bringing frames into Lightroom, and touching up and making corrections. Basically the process of remastering film. See you then.